The Sussexes are entering a new era. A website rebrand, new slimmed down portfolio of projects and less media interest than the circus of the past five years. Prince Harry and Meghan Markle's 15 minutes of intense fame looks to be coming to a close. And with that, many are suspecting Prince Harry is looking to return to the comfort and safety of the royal family. But despite his yearning for reconciliation, experts say the royal family want nothing to do with the treacherous prince. Sky News All-Stars Esther Kraku, Russell Myers and Meghan Kelly weigh in on Harry and Meghan's next moves. After years of fame, fortune and a love-hate relationship with the spotlight, the Sussexes' shine has dulled. They're no longer the new and shiny plaything of the world's media, with large companies realising that they don't in fact have the Midas touch, says Sky News All-Star Megan Kelly. Can we just talk about one of our favourite subjects, that being uh, uh, your, uh, your old mate, Megan Markle. Now, I noticed today, and there's all this website stuff, but I noticed today that she's announced a brand new podcast deal, right? And I, it yeah. just got me thinking about, you know, the princess in our life, you. Now, you started your own thing, you've built your own thing into millions of people around the world, why can't she build something? She's just got to get paid by somebody else all the time. Yeah, it's so true. And no one's ever heard of this podcast uh, outlet that she's going to. As far as I can tell, they've got far, far lefties like Sarah Silverman and Samantha B, who are loathed by everybody who is center or right of center. So this is what she's signing up for. She's declaring she's not just liberal or progressive. She's a far left progressive. Those are her new partners. Yeah, she can't build it because no one will come. She tried that. Let me tell you, from Spotify to this lemonada is a big fall down. She knows that. She couldn't get anybody else to pony up the dough. She needs cold, hard cash because she wants to fly private and she wants all the trappings of the royal life without having to work for it. And she does want to fly private. She is flying private on everyone else's dime. At the same time, as part of their rebrand, Harry's continuing to touting himself as an environmentalist. Okay. If you're an environmentalist, get on JetBlue. Stop with the <laughs> private flights everywhere because that's the only way they'll travel. And of course, she, another hypocrite, is calling herself a feminist who's going to shape the future. How? Because no one tuned into your first crappy podcast where all you did was lecture us on feminism and everyone hated it. Remember, she was so upset that she was objectified when she put on the tiny sparkly dresses on Deal or No Deal and they didn't want to hear her thoughts on nuclear codes. So it's a joke. She's not a feminist. She's only a Meganist. That's it. She cares about promoting one thing herself. Just ask Katie Weighty as she referred to Kate Middleton in her interview with Oprah, a low blow hit. Or ask Omid Scobie, Megan's stenographer, who took way below the belt hits at Kate in the, the book he just put out. She only likes one woman. It's herself. Paul Murray and Megyn Kelly add the Sussexes' media career has been short-lived because they don't contribute anything new or interesting to the lives of their audience, unless it's dishing dirt on the royal family. It doesn't matter how much glitter they decide to roll it in, it still is something nobody wants to buy, nobody wants to, to read, and whatever fascination they have are in lives in the past. And the thing that they don't get, I think that they don't understand, particularly say about you know, podcasts, video, all the rest of it, right? Unless you're going to be really, I mean, proper open about your life, right? Like that sort of reality level, okay, too much information, or let us into the madness of your life, then that's not particularly interesting and they're not really people that anyone would consider particularly insightful or dare I say sort of you know public intellectuals to actually tune into yeah. to okay how are they going to help my life like these are not you know Jordan Peterson like people oh god you didn't even mention them in the same breath <laughs> so <laughs> you're exactly right they, Just trying to they have you. no insightful commentary to offer on anything no one wants to hear unless they're going to be talking about the royal family which is how they got their Netflix deal. And it was interesting. You know, we wanted to see the behind the scenes stuff about the queen and so on. Um, no one's gonna listen. So if they're gonna talk about their lives and their thoughts on life, it's going to be more banalities. That's what we got the first time around. No one actually cares about 
what Meghan Markle thinks about X or Y or Z. Just want to hear them talk about the Queen and what it's like to be a royal. Now they're out of that material, so we're going to be stuck with more lectures on which words we're not allowed to use, according to who? Meghan Markle. Who cares what she thinks about what words I attempt to use in my life? Couldn't care less. This is why Spotify wanted to get rid of them. This is why they were called the greatest grifters of all time uh, by Bill Simmons over at Spotify. They didn't live up to their deal. They weren't producing more content for Netflix. All these deals are circling the drain. So they went to the no-name far-left organization that signed her up. I guess we're going to get more drivel on feminism, according to Meghan Markle, who's done nothing other than get married. <laughs> That's her big accomplishment. Fine, I like being married, but it's not like... That's what a feminist does. We get married, <laughs> and then we tell everybody about what we did as a married woman, thanks to our husband's money. Woo-hoo, me, me. And in worrying news for the couple, Meghan and Harry have supposedly undergone a secret work divorce, which will see them not working together on projects anymore, says Sky News contributor Emily Carver. Well, it's quite in interesting because, of course, we heard that Prince Harry was going to be talking to Good Morning America about the King's cancer diagnosis. And I don't know if you saw, but he looked to me like he was very uncomfortable asking, answering questions about the King because, of course, he only had a meeting with him for reportedly 45 minutes. If that very strange, strange relations. But it's good to see that, of course, the king does seem to be in decent spirits, in good spirits. He's very keen to get back to his duties, which is wonderful. But of course, we've got the Princess Catherine, too, who has been in hospital for a rather long time. Now, speaking uh, of Prince Harry, there are rumours he and Meghan are heading in separate directions, suggesting that they each want a, a career separate from this nightmare Sussex brand. Let's be honest, it's been an absolute nightmare. Now, Meghan was announced as a new host of a little-known podcast company called Lemonada Media, while Harry, as you said, gave that interview to Good Morning America solo. So why are they divvying up their working lives, do you think? And it's very interesting because they controversially updated their website to sussex.com and now Prince Harry calls himself a humanitarian, a military veteran, a mental health advocate and an environmental campaigner. Now Meghan calls herself a feminist and champion of human rights and gender equity. So clearly they're attempting to lean into their particular areas of interest, always modest, always modest, always. into their particular areas of interest to sort of carve out separate identities. Now we've heard for a while that perhaps they're heading in different directions, perhaps there's a little rift in terms of where their goals are, but clearly what they're doing is very much under the banner of their titles, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. That is deeply controversial in this country, whether they should be able to use the royal crest and the royal family for their own uh, commercial gain. But I do wonder whether there is so much interest in them as individuals or whether the interest is solely in what they can tell us about the royal family. And now that the revenue streams have dried up for Meghan and Harry, Buckingham Palace is purportedly concerned that the Sussexes are living beyond their means to prop up their Hollywood lifestyle in Los Angeles, explains Sky News all-star Esther Kraku. But I mean, after all, Harry and Meghan are out on their own and they do have quite the lifestyle. And it's interesting that the firm, it still seems to be keeping tabs. We understand there is some concern from within the palace about their spending. Is there anything in this? Well, yes, uh, but mainly because what happens when they run out of money? Uh, I don't think the royal family or, or the palace are concerned with how Harry and Meghan spend their money um, because it's their money. They can do what they want. We know that Princess Diana left uh, Harry a sizable inheritance, I think to the tune of around £36 million. Pounds. Um, so this, this is, man is in no way poor. Uh, and obviously the, the Netflix deal helps. Uh, he's able to fund these expensive court cases that I don't think will, will uh, cut pay him as much as he's paying into it, should I say. Um, and we know that Meghan was was a fairly successful actress in her own right. Um, but you have to factor in what exactly they're spending their money on. So apparently their, their mansion in Montecito, they took out a mortgage of about $9 million. Um, their security alone a year is probably worth in some, at least a few million dollars. Um, and so when you look at it from that perspective, their living expenses are adding up. And um, the, the palace estimates that they're, they're spending you know, $20 million a year just to exist. 
Uh, so what happens when you know the deals run one dry? I mean, Netflix, uh, Spotify is out the door. Netflix is a hundred million dollars. I'm assuming they'll, they'll spend part of that money on actual production. And um, so what are they going to to? How are they going to sustain themselves? And I think the concern for the palace is that when the money starts to dry up, they're going to you know go back to their shenanigans and their antics and, and offer anyone an interview that's willing to listen and and try and exploit their proximity to the royal family to make ends meet. Uh, we don't really know what's going to ha uh, you know, happen with that, but I suspect having round the clock armed security in the US is not cheap, particularly in a place like California, which is expensive to live in. Um, so that's mainly the concern of the palace. What happens when this couple runs out of money? Or even worse, what happens if they get divorced? Um, you know, where will Harry go? How will he sustain himself? Divorces in a, you know, a, I believe it's a community property state, California, that's certainly not going to be cheap. And he has children who will likely go with their mother more time than with their, spend more time with their mother than their father. So these are all kinds of things that the royal family have to, to, to factor in. It's not to say that they're concerned with, you know, them taking money from the, from the from the palace it's just there will come a point where this lifestyle will be unsustainable because the economic productivity of this couple is not very high this has led prince harry to slowly open the door to involving himself in the royal family once again says sky news all star russell myers well, prince harry the non-royal has apparently offered to come back and help out with royal duties due to his father king charles's health asking to take up a role similar to the one he and his wife proposed pre-Megxit. But my next guest insists Prince William will block any attempts from his wayward brother to return to the firm, as you would probably expect. Royal editor of The Mirror, Russell Myers, joins me now. Russell, great to see you. Your exclusive for The Mirror over the weekend insists that there is a 0% chance of Harry coming back in any capacity. Seriously, does he want to be a royal or not? Well, good evening, Danica. Well, that's a big question, isn't it? Because you know, over the last few years, we've had royal rift after royal rift and Harry sort of staking his claim to have financial freedom outside the royal family. Of course, you know, they left with sort of a blaze of glory after deciding to quit the royal family and saying that they were going to make tens and tens of millions of dollars in the corporate world. And it hasn't really worked out well for Harry and Meghan. You know, the Netflix deal is on the rocks. Meghan lost her Spotify deal. Um, Harry's memoir was pretty explosive. Nobody spared from his barbs uh, within the pages of the book. And so the, the, the details of this, uh, this uh, move by Prince Harry about that he wants a temporary role within the family, that he's willing to come back and help out the firm, seeing as King Charles is on the sideline with his cancer uh, treatment. Princess of Wales is still off work with her uh, after abdominal surgery. And it's, uh, it's beggar's belief, to be honest. I think that uh, Harry seems to think he can have a role within the family, but the family have certainly other ideas. The royal expert adds the royal family will firmly shut the door on a reconciliation with Harry and Meghan. Now, the events of the last few weeks seem to show a little bit of a softening, let's say, uh, from the Sussexes towards the rest of the royal family. Now, your masthead, The Mirror, has suggested this week that they're morphing back into being royals. What are the giveaways? Well, certainly, I mean, there's, uh, there's been a lot of controversy, both sides of the pond, really, for Harry and Meghan, and they're not far from it most of the time. However, my understanding was Prince Harry had uh, expressed his desire to try and take a temporary role back within the royal family. Can you believe that uh, the deal he signed, the Sandringham Summit four years ago when they decided to leave the royal family, that he would want to try and come back on that? That the late Queen, Prince William, and the then Prince of Wales, Prince Charles, now the King, had told him there was no way you could have an in and out model of the royal family. Harry seems to see it, still think that this could be on the cards. He seems to think that his father's cancer diagnosis, his sister-in-law, uh, the Princess of Wales, has been in hospital out of action as well. And that could open a door or an avenue for him. But certainly it, uh, it's, uh, it's my understanding that the royal family are going to shut that door firmly behind him and say that there is absolutely no place for this in and out role. But there may be a silver lining for Harry, who has found an unlikely ally in his aunt, Princess Anne. It's also been reported this week that Charles had been urged to send Princess Anne to speak uh, with Harry and Meghan. Is this the case and who would have prompted that course of action? 
Well, it's interesting, isn't it? Certainly, uh, you know, Princess Anne has been described as uh, King Charles's trusted lieutenant. She is the one that he used as a sounding board for a lot of issues. Certainly, I imagine, were not only to do with her, the business of state, but certainly the issues with his family as well. And why wouldn't Princess Anne, the Princess Royal, be sent over? The no-nonsense attitude of Anne would probably shake them um, and sort of shake their heads and say, listen, we've got to try and work this out with the, with the family. What is it that you necessarily want from your father and your brother is it an apology is it a sit down is it something that sort of can't be brought to the table just for the three men to try and uh, sort, of sort their differences out but i think whether Anne would actually go over um speaks volumes because she definitely does have a relationship with harry she was the one who met him at balmoral when he flew in and uh, the, the when the late queen was passing away and uh, and certainly she might only be his only ally in the camp at the moment Despite having an ally in his aunt and opening up lines of communication with his father, Prince Harry will have to try a lot harder to mend bridges with his brother, who is said to be appalled at his behaviour. Well, the issue for Prince William is certainly that uh, he feels that his brother uh, needs to come to the table and apologise to the family. You've had you know, countless TV interviews, starting with the Oprah Winfrey, then the Netflix series, the, the memoir that absolutely savaged um, each and every member of his family and still no accountability from Prince Harry, uh, still no relationship with his brother. I mean, Prince William has got an awful lot on his plate at the moment. He's got his uh, his father taking a leave of absence, undergoing cancer treatment. His wife has been in hospital. She's not going to be coming back to royal duties for a fair a uh, few weeks at least. And, you know, Harry on the other side of the pond pontificating about how he could sort of save the royal family is certainly not the order of the day for Prince William. And I think that he's been pretty appalled by his behaviour um, and, uh, and certainly wouldn't wait welcoming back. And uh, who could blame him? And the prospect of a possible reconciliation between Princess Kate and Meghan Markle is even further away, says Sky News All-Star Louise Roberts. Now, Louise, a report today in Vanity Fair that Meghan is apparently trying to mend her rift with Princess Catherine. It's an unnamed source, but do you think there's likely, is there anything to this? Well, I think there's more chance of hell freezing over than Kate wanting to patch things up with Meghan. I mean, what's in it for Kate, really? I mean, you could say maybe she wants the relationship between Harry and Willem to mend, but that's not going to be fixed by her becoming besties again with Meghan. I don't think she trusts her. I think also Meghan's problem is that she's allowed this narrative to flourish that Kate and um, Charles were somehow making racist comments about Archie before he was born. I mean, this is a narrative which she's never defended them on. She never said, no, they are not the ones I'm talking about. So why would Kate want to mend the bridges with her? And I also think it's interesting that this story's ended up in an American magazine because traditionally these stories are briefed by various royal households and there's no way that Kate and William are going to brief an American magazine to somehow warm up the case for a reconciliation between the two sisters-in-law. I mean, I, I, I just don't buy it at all. I think it's rubbish. I think that's a very good observation, Louise. And despite Harry's enthusiasm to return to the firm, Sky News All-Star Esther Kraku says the prince is deluded. Say, uh, Will, 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 Will asked him whether illnesses uh, can bring families together and whether it's something that could happen in this case. And Harry said, yes, you know, that, that is certainly possible. Now, I don't know w what grass Harry has been smoking um, to think that his scorched earth tactic with the release of his book Spare and the Netflix series and the Oprah interview somehow in any way shape or form will still leave an avenue open for him to go back to the royal family in any significant measure. We know that you know William uh, and Harry are still not on speaking terms. Uh, I, I suspect his stepmother is probably not very keen on him either given the, the things he wrote about her in his book. So for him to say that you know it is possible that King Charles' illness will bring the family together, either he's extremely deluded or he's under the influence of some substance because for most people they don't think that's a possibility and I, I mean I, I spoke to my father about this actually and you know people will say he's a traditional West African man but he was like if, if you if you did what Harry's done to me I, I would probably disown you and and King Charles famously did tell uh, William and Harry at uh, Prince Philip's funeral to not make the last few years of his his life a misery uh, and and Harry still has so I, I really don't understand kind of on what basis he thinks that he has a way of reconciling with his family 
Obviously, King Charles is more amenable to reconciliation, but again, he's Harry's last living parent, and, and it's really hard to cut off your child, but it's certainly not hard to cut off a sibling, especially one that has repeatedly insulted your, you, your wife, your, your stepmother, and, and put your family into disrepute. So, you know, many people did raise their eyebrows when he said that because they were just curious as to kind of what influence he's been under, what the substance, what substance he's been taking to say such a thing.